This video covers operation of snorkel articulated boom aerial workstations with working heights from 41 feet to 60 feet and horizontal reach from 24 feet to over 43 feet. All feature multiple articulated booms. The top boom, sometimes referred to as the main boom, has an extendable tip boom. A J at the end of the model number indicates that the boom also has a jib at the tip. These workstations have more up and over capabilities, extra horizontal and vertical reach, and the ability to reach up, over, and down. These features combined with snorkel quality, dependability, low maintenance cost, and enhanced safety features result in a comfortable, flexible machine, engineered to go most anywhere and do most anything. You should never use any boom lift for an unintended purpose. These lifts should never be used as a crane, hoist, or jack, and they should be operated only by a trained operator. This video focuses on operation. It is not designed to replace reading the operator's manual for your specific model. Prior to operating the lift, you should be thoroughly familiar with the manual and receive proper hands-on instruction from a qualified trainer. You also need to know OSHA and local regulations concerning operation and the use of safety devices, such as fall restraints. And, of course, you should always dress appropriately and wear proper safety protection gear when operating any equipment and on any job site. There are three major hazards when operating any aerial workstation. Electrocution, crushing, and tip-over. Following the procedures in the operator's manual and this video, will help you guard against them. Advanced knowledge of the specifics of the model you will be running and its controls, gauges, and safety devices are important, as is knowledge of the safety decals and labeling. These matters are covered in detail in the operator's manual, which also contains nomenclature, diagrams, and a troubleshooting guide. The manual shows all the decals on a machine and where they are placed. When you see warnings like these, Heed them precisely. Snorkel workstations have two control panels, a lower control panel on the machine's base and an upper control panel on the work platform. Their appearance is slightly different from model to model. Thoroughly familiarize yourself with all controls and gauges before attempting to operate the machine. The battery disconnect switch is located near the battery itself. If this switch is turned off, it interrupts the circuit at the battery's positive terminal. Snorkel boom lifts can be powered up from either of the control panels. The lower switch requires a key. If your machine is diesel powered or has the dual fuel feature, check your operator's manual for any special starting instructions. Before describing the controls, it is important to understand how these workstations elevate and some differences between the operation of AB and UNO models. With AB models, the lower and middle sections of the boom are considered a riser boom assembly. The two work together to raise the base of the extendable top or main boom. This up and down action is performed with one control. The UNO operates from a slightly different philosophy. Each boom section is considered a separate boom and has separate controls to raise and lower it. So you can, for example, raise the base boom, then raise the middle boom, then raise the extendable top boom. On all models, the top boom is separately controlled, with switches for raise, lower, and to extend the tip boom. Jib action and platform leveling are also separately controlled. Uno series lifts have no jib section. The lower control panel has all switches necessary for operating the boom from the ground. These include boom raise lower and extension switches, a turntable rotation switch, platform level switch, and on jib equipped models, the jib articulation switch. The panel also has a large red emergency stop button, a selector switch that determines which control panel is active and a ground operation switch that must be held upward while operating the boom controls from the ground. Other controls include an engine throttle, a boom speed knob, and platform rotation and leveling switch. There's also an emergency power switch that activates a small battery-powered hydraulic pump 
to lower the booms in case the main system fails. Controls for operating the machine from the platform are located on the upper control panel. Controls on this panel in general duplicate the ones on the lower control panel. On the AB50 and AB60, the upper panel has a joystick type control for moving forward and back and steering right and left. UNO also has a joystick type control for moving forward and back, but uses a toggle switch for steering right and left. The platform foot switch must be held down while operating the boom or drive controls. Do not step on the foot switch while you are trying to start the engine. The upper control panel also includes a drive range switch. Use the low range for traveling on grades and ramps, mid range for driving on soft surfaces, and high speed for traveling on hard surfaces. AB and UNO are drivable at full height. There is also an emergency power switch. Snorkel AB and UNO models have a number of alarms and safety devices that must be working when the machine is operated. You will need to check each of them as part of your daily inspection. The red emergency stop switches on the upper and lower panels stop the entire machine immediately anytime they are pressed. Once an emergency stop switch has been pressed, you will need to pull it outward before you can restart the machine. This sound indicates an engine shutoff condition high temperature, low oil pressure, or when the alternator is not charging the battery. If this alarm sounds, the machine should be shut off immediately and serviced. On some models, an automatic shutoff feature is activated. The level sensor alarm makes a warbling sound, warning that the chassis is more than five degrees out of level and a tipping hazard exists. Some AB models have pivoting, terrain-conforming front axles. The feature keeps all four wheels on the ground on rough terrain and give the four-wheel drive system better traction. The axles are designed to release for this function when the two lower booms are fully down and the top boom is lowered to an angle of approximately five degrees. When the booms are raised from this position, the axles lock for additional stability. An axle lock alarm sounds if you attempt to raise the boom and the axles have failed to lock. If this happens, lower the boom, drive to another location on firm level ground and attempt to raise the booms. If the alarm sounds again, there is a malfunction. Do not operate the machine. Call a technician to investigate and fix the problem. All snorkel aerial platforms are equipped with a self-closing platform gravity gate and a horn. With those basics behind us, let's move on to operating the articulating boom lifts. Safe operation begins with a pre-start inspection of the equipment and the working area. These are complex machines that require detailed daily inspection of all items on the operator's manual's inspection list. To start, turn the battery switch on. The battery disconnect switch should never be turned off with the engine running, as damage could occur to the electrical system components. Pull out the emergency stop button. If the machine was stowed the previous day, the battery would be off and the emergency stop switch pushed in. Make sure that none of the circuit breakers are tripped. Put the selector switch on the lower control panel in the lower control station position. You will need to check the fluid levels and for leaks of fuel, engine oil, coolant and hydraulic oil, checking all gauges and the batteries. If you are not sure how to do those things on your machine, complete instructions are included in the operator's manual. You also will need to check for any structural damage, loose bolts or broken welds, and inspect all slide pads and surfaces that contact them, the pin caps and snap rings that connect the booms. See the operator's manual for how to inspect these areas. Check the tires and wheels for signs of damage and make sure all of the safety features are in good condition. Start the engine from the base control panel and let it warm up. On dual fuel models, if you start in the LP mode, the shutoff valve on the LP gas tank must be open. Next, check those gauges and functions that require that the engine be running. Check the axle unlocked alarm, 
following the directions in the operator's manual. You can test the tilt alarm by raising the boom and manually moving the level sensor to the side as far as you can. At the lower control panel, with the lower control station selected, press up on the ground operation switch and operate the ground controls at the same time, checking each function. We'll demonstrate these controls in the next section of this video. On UNO and AB60, test the emergency lowering knob on the hydraulic cylinder for each boom to make sure they will allow the booms to lower in case of a power failure. The valve knobs are located at the base of the hydraulic cylinder for each boom section. The operator's manual shows the locations of these valve knobs for each model. We will explain the process further in the section on emergency operation. The UNO models have additional controls that operate in conjunction with these valves. These manual override buttons are located behind a door on the left side of the base of the machine. To lower the booms without power and to test this emergency lowering feature, you must first open the bleed down valve for a boom section and then press the associated manual override button. When you test the boom turntable rotation function, if you push the switch to rotate the turntable clockwise, it will turn toward you. So make sure you have room to step out of the way. Check the emergency stop switch. When you press it, the engine will turn off and all functions will stop. You must pull the switch outward to restart the engine and operate the machine. Now, test the emergency power system. The battery switch should be on and the emergency stop button pulled outward. Hold the emergency power switch in the emergency position and the ground operation switch in the on position. You should now be able to operate the machine on emergency power. Once you have verified that the emergency power works, release the emergency power switch. With the engine running, set the ground platform switch on the lower control panel to platform and inspect and operate the controls on the upper control panel, similarly to the way you checked out the lower controls. Finally, make sure the operator's manual is stowed in its proper place and that all decals and placards are clean and in good condition. The other phase of your safety inspection is inspecting the work area. You also need to be aware of whether there will be other persons in the area and whether there will be vehicles present. Some very important things you must check on are the presence of electrical hazards, tipping hazards, hazardous conditions caused by materials such as flammable liquids and other combustibles. Be alert for anything overhead that the platform could run into or could cause a head or crushing injury. Be aware of wind and weather conditions that could increase tipping hazards. Snorkel aerial workstations are not electrically insulated and are not designed to protect the operator from electrocution. Always observe safe approach distances for electrical conductors. If the boom or platform comes in contact with electrical wires, do not attempt to operate the ground controls until the power is turned off. Before using the work platform in any hazardous location, Verify that it is approved and of the type required by ANSI NFPA 505 for use in that type of location. Observe all other safety rules and best practices such as never allowing riders and never operating a machine that is not operating properly. Remember that anyone operating an aerial workstation from the platform must wear an approved fall restraint when the boom is raised. With the pre-start inspection completed, Let's look at how to operate the machine. All boom motion functions can be activated from the lower control panel. Caution! Soft soil or unstable conditions under the machine can add to tipping hazards. Make sure the machine is on a firm level surface. Never exceed the rated platform capacity. If the machine is not already running, make sure the battery switch is on, no circuit breakers are tripped, and the emergency stop switch is pulled out. Then, turn the start switch to on. To operate the machine from the lower control panel, first set the ground or platform switch on the lower controls to ground. Hold the ground operation switch on while activating the controls. 
Moving the main boom switch to up will cause the top boom to elevate. On UNO models, this may also be designated as the top boom. Moving the switch to down lowers the boom. If movement is sluggish and the ambient temperature is below about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, the hydraulic oil probably needs warming. Increase the engine speed for a few minutes to warm up the machine. Some models have a hydraulic oil warm-up switch. As mentioned earlier, the UNO models operate slightly differently from AB models. On AB models, choosing up on the riser boom elevation switch causes the riser sections to elevate like this. Down causes the opposite motion. UNO models have separate controls for each boom. Up on the middle boom control causes this action. Up on the lower boom control causes this action. Down produces the opposite result. In other words, to accomplish the same movement we saw a moment ago with the AB models requires the use of two controls on the UNO. Moving the turntable swing switch to clockwise rotates the entire platform clockwise when viewed from above. It will swing toward you, so be able to step aside. Counterclockwise rotates in the opposite direction. When the boom extension switch is moved to out or extend, the telescoping boom tip extends. Moving the switch in the opposite direction retracts the boom. The jib boom switch up position moves the jib up. Down moves the jib in the opposite direction. On AB50 and AB60, moving the platform rotate switch to clockwise rotates the platform clockwise as seen from above. The counterclockwise position moves it in the opposite direction. UNO has manual rotation. Moving the platform level switch to up tilts the platform floor upward or away from the ground and down tilts the platform floor downward toward the ground. To operate the machine from the upper control panel, first set the ground platform switch on the lower controls to platform. Then enter the platform. Make sure the gate is securely latched and fasten your safety restraint to the lanyard attachment point. Controls on the platform duplicate those on the base control panel and there are additional controls for driving the machine. Check to make sure that the emergency stop switch is not pushed inward and no circuit breakers are tripped. If the engine has been turned off, start it from the upper control panel using the same procedure used from the ground. Remember, the foot switch must be depressed for the movement controls to operate, but never let up on the foot switch when the machine is in motion. This will cause a sudden stop and possibly an injury. An aerial platform will tip over if it becomes unstable. Death or serious injury can result from a tip over accident. Do not drive an elevated platform on soft, uneven or sloping surfaces. Check your operator's manual for the maximum grade your machine can safely operate on. The maximum safe grade for these machines varies from 20% on some models up to 40% for some models with four-wheel drive and terrain-conforming front axles. When driving on lesser grades, keep the main boom near horizontal. If there is a jib, elevate it just enough to provide adequate ground clearance. It is best to drive between work areas with the boom lowered and in a position that allows the best field of vision. On jib models, elevate the jib to provide ground clearance and make sure it does not obstruct your view. Before driving, make sure the speed control is set where you want it. Use the slow speed if driving very close to other objects. Also, if a power cord is plugged in to the power input connector for the platform ground fault interrupt outlet, unplug it before moving the machine. On AB50 and AB60, the drive joystick controls forward and reverse motion and steers the machine. On UNO, the drive joystick controls forward and reverse motion. UNO is steered by a toggle switch. Directions are indicated on an adjacent color-coded decal. Pushing the joystick forward causes the machine to move forward. Pulling it toward you makes the machine move in reverse. The front wheels are the steer wheels. 
moving the joystick to the right turns them to the right, and moving it to the left steers them left. The color-coded arrows on the control panel correspond to color-coded arrows on the chassis that also indicate which direction the chassis will move. You can move forward or in reverse and steer at the same time. The drive speed is proportional to the joystick position, so movement speed increases as you continue to press forward or pull back within limits determined by the speed range chosen. To stop the machine, return the joystick to the center position and release the foot switch. The wheels will stay where you set them if you don't manually steer them back to a neutral position. You could execute a more sudden emergency stop by removing your foot from the foot switch. The controls on the upper panel for boom operation work identically to the base panel controls we demonstrated. It is best to start boom functions with the speed knob set on slow. Then, increase the speed after you have the feel of the movement. Always remain alert and look in the direction of movement. When the elevated work platform will be left in the same position for an extended period, you can turn off the engine to conserve fuel. Never operate a snorkel aerial workstation positioned on a truck, trailer, railroad car, floating vessel, scaffolding, or other platform without written approval from snorkel. If the boom or platform becomes snagged in some obstacle and simple control reversal will not correct the problem, evacuate all personnel from the platform before further attempts to free it. It is not recommended to use the platform to hoist personnel, supplies, or equipment for transfer to or from a structure. There are three forms of emergency operation for snorkel articulated boom models. Emergency stop, emergency power, and on UNO and AB60 only, emergency bleed down. The two emergency stop switches provide a fast way to manually turn the main power off. Remember, they must be pulled outward before the machine can be turned on again. The emergency power system provides a battery-powered backup hydraulic system to power all functions if the engine will not start. Limit the use of emergency power to 10 minutes to keep the emergency pump and motor from overheating. After 10 minutes, the emergency system needs a 15-minute cool-down period. There are emergency power switches on both control panels. To run either one, the battery disconnect switch must be on, the selector switch must be set to the control panel you're using, and the emergency stop switch must be pulled outward. Then, you can retract and lower the boom using the same switches you would use under full power. The movement will be slow and may have long lag times. Emergency power operation is limited by battery life. When the boom is down, release the emergency power switch and turn the main switch off. Emergency bleed down lowering is only from the ground on most snorkel workstations. It lowers the boom when there is no emergency power by allowing the hydraulic fluid to return to its reservoir. On UNO models, it involves bleeding and lowering the booms one at a time, beginning with the lower or base boom, and proceeding to the middle boom, then the upper boom. Caution, this is a non-powered lowering only operation. Be careful not to lower the platform or booms onto electrical wires, people, or other obstructions. Note that you will have lowering only control of one boom or section at a time and will not be able to control the work platform or jib during the lowering. For example, you won't be able to rotate or level the platform or raise or lower the jib. The bleed down valves are placed slightly differently from model to model. Consult your operator's manual for specific instructions. For UNO only, the valves are just below the hydraulic cylinder that operates the boom section involved. Some lower section valves are adjacent to the cylinder on the outside of the machine. Some are below the turntable inside housing and accessible through a port. Do not reach for a bleed down valve with your body under the section of boom it will lower. You would be in a crushing hazard position. Very slowly open the emergency bleed down valve. The further it is opened, the faster the booms come down. UNO models, as mentioned, have additional controls housed in a compartment on the turntable of the machine. 
after a bleed down valve is opened. You must push the corresponding manual override button to perform the manual bleed down lowering. When the boom has completely lowered, 